Hello, my name is Rima E. Labo, and I am the medical director of the Natural Solutions Foundation. Free radicals are produced in tremendous numbers by radioactive or ionizing energy, ionizing radiation. We can do some things to protect ourselves from the free radical damage and from the uh, seating in our bodies of radioactive material. The first thing we can do, and people are talking a lot about it, is to tie up all the binding sites in the thyroid that radioactive isotopes of iodine could fit into. Now, iodine can be thrown at your body in a pharmaceutical dose. That's potassium iodide. And if you're exposed to a lot of I-131 and the other radioactive forms of iodine, you should take <coughs> potassium iodide. But you don't take it long term. You take it when you need it for a short period of time because that much iodine in that concentrated a form is actually only safe for a short period of time. So when you know that a cloud containing radioactive iodine is coming toward you, that's the time to take potassium iodide, not just because you hear that there may be radioactive iodine. So that's the first point. But all of us are iodine deficient. Iodine used to be very widely used before pharmaceuticals came on board that wouldn't be needed if iodine were available. For instance, antibiotics. For instance, uh, a whole variety of chemicals, of drugs, which would be knocked out of the market totally because our immune system, our um, uh, energy system, our um, reproductive system, they're all of them dependent on high levels of iodine. You give people enough iodine, you don't need the drugs, and we know that's bad for business. So, iodine was demonized. You need iodine. Iodized salt doesn't do it. You need a continuing influx of bioavailable iodine not only for your thyroid, but for breast tissue, prostate tissue, reproductive tissues, for all of the tissues that are active metabolically, for your digestive system, for your immune system. Now, there are many ways to get iodine. One of them is to take organic, unpolluted sea vegetables. What does this have to do with radiation beyond adding iodine to your thyroid. Now, if you're eating enough sea vegetables, you may still need to take potassium iodide if there's a radioactive cloud of I-131, I-134, and, and so on, the other radioactive types of iodine. But if you have good amounts of iodine on board, you have the capacity to protect yourself in several ways, one of which is that you need less potassium iodide if, God forbid, it should ever happen, that you have to flood your thyroid. Now, it's a very important thing to do. In the Chernobyl accident, the children in the Ukraine were given no ether, uh, potassium iodide. The children in Poland were given potassium iodide. There were huge numbers of thyroid cancers among the children in the Chernobyl downwind pattern until the downwind pattern got to Poland. There were no increases in the number of thyroid cancers in children because they had been saturated with potassium iodide in a brief fashion. Once the cloud passed over, that was no longer necessary. Remember, Potassium iodide does nothing to protect the rest of you from radiation. We have partnered with a company that sells a very, very high quality sea vegetable that we think is important for you. And at the bottom of the screen, you will see a link that allows you 
to go to the Emerald Sea product and purchase it. You should be taking that on a regular basis. It is an excellent product and will support your immune system, your reproductive system, your ability to uh, meet the challenges that are being presented to you. You may still need potassium iodide if you are exposed to radioactive iodine. However, you absolutely need to protect your entire system with good thyroid function and with good uh, iodine uh, levels, which iodized salt, I promise you, will not do. Now, What about other radioactive materials? What about other problems besides iodine, which is the one that everybody thought of first? Cesium-137, calcium, boron, magnesium, plutonium, uranium, and on and on and on. They all present a threat. Plutonium, in fact, presents an astoundingly high threat. I want to talk for a minute about plutonium. Every single nuclear reactor produces plutonium. Whether it starts out like reactor number three uh, in Japan as a mixed oxide plutonium reactor, and the stupidity to me of ever building such a thing is beyond comprehension, or whether it starts out as a uranium fission pile, because one of the breakdown products, one of the things that uranium fission produces is plutonium. If you get a molecule of plutonium in your lung, in your stomach, in your skin, the, the membranes of your mouth, or wherever, you have a 100% chance of developing cancer. 100%. Now, cancer, in my clinical experience, is a curable disorder using natural methodologies, using nutritional and other similar strategies, but you don't want it anyway. So, it is imperative that, first of all, genetically modified organisms and nuclear reactors be eliminated from the face of this planet. And therefore, we're asking every one of you, within the sound of my voice, to take the action steps to tell the decision makers no more.